Hey guys, welcome back to the Not So Ordinary Scrapbook Channel. Um, I thought today that I would go through some stuff that I haven't really had a chance to show you. Um, things that recently came in the mail and then this book that I bought a while ago. Um, so I thought that I would just like kind of just go through it with you so you could see some of the stuff that I've recently gotten. I haven't really had time to scrapbook at all um, with finishing up the um, office and then um, I'm on my final course um, for school. Um, it's a 12 week course and um, part of it, part of the course is um, designing um, thematic units. Um, and um, multimodal um, instruction for diverse students. And it's just, it's a lot of work and it takes a lot of um, research and a lot of my time. So yesterday I spent all day <laughs> working on that. And um, so um, yeah, that took up my entire day. So, um, this, um, is a September kit for Ellie Studio, um, that came in the mail, came in the mail quite a while ago, um, I don't know what that was, um, I think it's been sitting in here for probably about three weeks, honestly, but I know that I, um, it came like shortly after the Felicity Jane kit and I hadn't filmed after that kit. So, um, let me go through the die cuts with you first of all. Um, of course they're autumn themed, um, because it's September. So, um, I'm hoping you can see this correctly. Um, these are just all punch outs that you um, can put your own adhesive on. Um, they say autumn favorites, remember this, love one day at a time, XOXO, love my family, true story, yes, days like these, and then grateful heart, picture perfect, cute as a pumpkin, laugh out loud, awesome, the best, and currently. And then there's some leaf, there's a leaf and a couple leaves, I guess. Um, some hearts, a star, and, um, a lot of journaling, um, labels. So, those will be very versatile for fall. Um, the Project Life cards, I don't know if I should even call them Project Life cards because that's, um, synonymous with, um, Becky Higgins, and this is not Becky Higgins, but, um, I always call them Project Life cards because, they're the same type of cards that you would put in a Project Life album. Um, I don't do Project Life. Um, I don't know what you would call them. Pocket cards? Maybe that's a better term for them. This is just a thank you note. Um, and then this is just a scrap that I will probably use the back of for just stamping or whatever. Um, the larger cards, it says thank you or thankful all the way down it. Oh, for this moment. This has got some stitching on it. Um, faux stitching, of course, that's in the card itself. This says new season, new routine, and it's got like the days of the week. So those are the larger cards and these are the smaller ones. So there's a leaf print, some hearts, um, like an um, ombre effect, hello autumn with leaves. This is more stitching effects with different types of stitching. Right now, highlights from the stay. This is just like a 
a um, aqua blue grid. This just says love this over and over again with a little heart. Some more stitching to kind of have, it kind of gives the handmade vibe, which I, seems like it's really popular this year. So I kind of got out like with my decor items this year, a lot of handmade things that I don't normally get out that I've made over the years or I received as a gift from someone. And it does kind of give a homey touch to your house. So it must be the new, the new trend that's coming out. There's a black star. Um, I tried to get, I try to get inspiration off of Pinterest a lot of the time because, um, there's no sense reinventing the wheel, right? So, um, a lot of my inspiration for different rooms in my house and like decor and things like that, um, I find off of Pinterest and then I try to like shop my house to see if I have items that are similar to that. And then I just kind of go from there. Um, game day details, final score highlights date. That would probably be like for a football game or whatever, or volleyball or whatever, whatever kind of sport you watch. Um, this is like a rainbow stripe. Having fun. All the details. So I think some of these are also school themed because they look, they kind of remind me of school. Um, here's like a ABC grid and it's on dark green. On the agenda today, this week, this month, hearts on aqua, thinking, feeling, embracing, and then September highlights. So that's everything in the Ali studio. Okay. <laughs> Sorry if you hear people talking in the background. Our middle son has a date tonight, so he's going out with his girlfriend, Jordan. They're going to go out to eat at Monocle's, and then they're going to go to um, see the new Venom movie. So, that should be fun for them. Okay, so that's Helly Studio. I also got in the mail the new scrapbook and cards today magazine um that i have a subscription for i'm thinking this is probably the last one before my subscription runs out because it seems like the first one that i got was fall of last year so i'm thinking that my this is probably the last one that i'm gonna get from that subscription but i'm not sure <laughs> um but I didn't really get a chance to like flip through this too much. It's very much um, autumn themed. Um, but it's probably my favorite of all the scrapbooking magazines um, or magazines that are out. I basically like to look at the trends that are like going on in different ways to use this. Like they took leaves die cut leaves and then they um, used floss to make the veins in the leaves which is really cool and they kind of used a like a homemade um, crochet type um, stitch to that which is really cool which can definitely be um, copied um, so that was something that kind of draws me in. Like I said, I haven't had time to even look at this. So this is the first time that I'm looking at it. Um, but I'm trying to pull out like some ideas that spark interest as I look through this, as I talk to you. So here's another one with the leaves. They took floss and it doesn't look like they separated the floss. They used it thick. And then it looks like they just used the paper piercing tool to like make the veins and then they stitched it with a large um, needle. I 
It looks really cool and they went monochromatic with it, which I love. I love that design concept. In fact, I love this layout. I would love to like do a, um, do a layout very similar to this. And I love how they added pink leaves in, which is not traditional fall colors and blue as well. Um, I love that combination. I think that I can replicate that fairly easy. So that's kind of on my agenda as I look through. So that's kind of the things that I do when I'm looking through a magazine for the first time. I kind of take note in my head like, oh, I like that. Or, you know, I'm probably the same as everybody else. Everyone else probably does it. This is a larger picture, picture of the, the leaf layout that I think I'm going to do. This is a cool little printer. You can print on shoelaces and ribbons. How cool is that? It's neat. I'm always coming out with new things. <sighs> so it looks like it's going to rain outside. Um, Scott and I were in the living room and we were watching um, The Witches of Eastwick, which is a Halloween movie, and um, this afternoon, because I got all my work done aside from um, the thematic unit that I have to do over the weekend, but I kind of gave my day, myself the day off since yesterday. I work like from morning till I think I went to bed at about 12 45 and like only took like breaks in there to like eat, go to the bathroom. Um, just like 10, 15 minute breaks here and there. I mean, it was definitely a study day yesterday but I had a lot to read a lot to read um here they use the floss again around the circles which is kind of cool so that's an element that I could use and then they have some sketches as well if you're the type of scrapbooker that likes to use sketches I don't ever go by sketches because I like to create my own thing and even when like if I like a layout and I'm going to um, design something similar, it usually goes in my own direction. Like, I'll start out, you know, maybe using some of the concepts that they um, have on the page and then I kind of go my own way with it. And I think that a lot of people do that. I think that that's how creativity works is you get ideas from one place and then you build on to that information with your own ideas. And it's kind of how children learn as well. Um, if you're teaching young children, um, you think about like when you're um, in an education sense, um, you're trying to build on what they already know. And, um, and that's how children learn best. Well, as a adults, we do too. You know, we learn best by seeing something if you're a visual learner. And even if you're not a visual learner, you see something and you're like, um, your brain is working and it's, it's building ideas on what you see. And so it's kind of fun that way. I really like that wagon. Very cute. So... But you build on those con concepts, is what I was going to say. That's kind of neat, pink and yellow. I haven't scrapbooked with pink and yellow for a really long time, but that's really cute. That's neat. Neat way to use the stencils and the daubers. I have these daubers, and I don't think that I've ever used them. I think they're just sitting in my stash somewhere because I forget, like, I put these stamps on my desk because I need to make a point, like, in every layout to use, like, at least one stamp because that's something that has been sorely neglected in my stash. And sometimes when you have it out in front of you, you remember to use it. Otherwise, you kind of veer toward the same products over and over again. That's a different die cutting machine that I've never seen before. 
magic mat. It's called Plat Platinum. Platinum? Never heard of that. These are cute. I usually cut these out in this magazine. Every, every magazine usually has like a page of these like different photo play ads or it's it's an advertisement but I usually will rip out this page and then I'll cut these out and use them on my on different embellishments I will just because this is you know magazine paper of course although this is a thicker magazine paper um I will I will back it with cardstock or whatever and then you can use these embellishments because why not right you own the magazine and you're just using it for personal use. So here's some more. Um, this is this stitched with, I can't see well, I'm sorry. I think these leaves were stitched on the sewing machine with thread, but I still like that look on the wood grain with the, with the pink and the yellow leaves. It's really it's really interesting how they drew pink into fall, like kind of a fall color this year. It's interesting. Um, that's a cute Halloween layout with a bunch of pumpkins with that die cut overlay. That's a cute wreath. I used to make these kind of little folded chains all the time when I was a kid. I never thought of twisting them together. Are you okay? What happened? Did someone fall down? I just heard a big crash. <laughs> it sounded like someone like hit the floor, like they tripped or fell or something, but there's no obstacles in the floor way I don't know unless I tripped on the rug or but the rug has is um taped down to the floor with carpet tape or floor rug tape <sighs> when your kids are older they don't usually say <laughs> say much when they get hurt oh it was hunter hunter what did you do what'd you trip over are you okay? Damn, baby. Fuck that. Hey, what are you trying to do? Step over it? Yeah. You tripped over the baby gate? Are oh, you he okay? Tried, but he didn't get it. More like this? Or boom. Are you okay? Huh? I got the banana on, dude. I did that in the living room. Oh, I heard a crash. Hunter tripped over the baby gate. <laughs> You're supposed to open the baby gate. You're not supposed to trip over it. <laughs> so it looks like it's going to rain and Scott is grilling out pork chops for dinner. That's going to hurt later on. You're going to have a bruise on your hip, probably. Did you fall flat on your butt? I fell on my knee. I went like, I tripped. I went. You fell on your knees? Mm -hmm. Like right here. Why didn't you open head. the baby gate? Because it's a pain in the butt to open it. It's a pain in the butt to open it? Yeah, I can usually clear it. But <laughs> my shoe, the top of my shoe caught it. I can't, I can't clear it. I'm too short. I can clear it. It's just my shoe got caught. Oh my goodness. Oh, my knees. All because we don't want the dog in there. <laughs> we use baby gates to keep our dogs out of rooms that we don't want them in. Because we have one dog in particular that likes to go potty in certain places that we don't want him to go potty. You can let him out all day long and that dog will still go potty in the house. Oh, that's cute. Look at those little monsters. Those are cute. That's cute too. This like diagram 
Halloween diagram. cute wreath with a a um what is it called an embroidery um hoop that's cute so it looks like the freebies this month are these fall freebie cards um that you can download and print on your computer and then there is a cut file I have downloaded the cards before and printed them out on cardstock. The cut file, I have never downloaded because I just, I don't have a way to cut it out other than manually. Um, but I might try it um, and see, like, if I can print it out on colored cardstock and, um, like, fussy cut it out. I don't know. I don't know if it's worth that. I don't have a 12 by 12 printer. I only have an eight and a half by 11 printer. So I would probably have to like print out one portion at a time and either piece it together or cut off, like just use like pieces of the leaves. I think that is what I would do, but that's basically it for this, um, for the fall issue of scrapbook and cards today. And then this is the book that I found at Barnes and Noble that I don't know why these kind of books draw me in. They always do um, because they're full of paper and I am a lover of paper. Um, probably more than any other scrapbook supply, I love paper. I don't know why it's crazy. I know, but I think paper is just so versatile. You can use it for so many things. So I'm going to just go through this and like take it apart. Um, I will probably cut out this love and use it. I will probably cut out these flowers and use it. So basically when I take apart one of these books, I just like start ripping. Um, I'll probably use like these, the florals on here. I generally use everything in a book like this. So the pages are perforated. This is, and are they double sided? Yeah, they're double sided. So like this is one page and this is one side. One side. I'll probably use this the more decorative side. It's probably what I'm gonna use. And I'll make page kits with them. This I might use the lined. Just because there's two of them. So I'm just going to go through here while I talk to you and rip these out so you can kind of see. This was designed for an envelope, like so you can make an envelope, but I probably won't use it for an envelope. I'll probably just use like either the green side or the floral side. Just because I don't make my own envelopes. I like that. So otherwise, um, let's see. Where did I leave off talking to you guys? Um, I really like that pattern of book. So um, Scott is waiting. Scott heard back from the company that he's going to be working for. And they said that... Um, like, as of last night, they got everything in that they needed. And then they just need to set up, like, an orientation start date with him. So, hopefully that comes next week. Um, he did get a hold of unemployment. Um, they apologized. Apparently, the problem was some hacker got into several different... Was able to get into several different unemployment accounts and um, change information while they were caught. But the problem is, is that because of this, they had locked these accounts. Well, this was long before Scott um, 
lost his job, so it wasn't a big deal. I mean, I remember him being notified of the fraud, but we really didn't worry about it because he wasn't getting unemployment at the time. I guess he should have done something right away, um, contacted them because his account was locked. And so that's why he wasn't able to get in there himself and change the checking account information. I had thought it was seven years, but it has actually been 12 years since he last used unemployment because the last job that he had before this, he did not qualify for unemployment. So it was several years ago. It was like 2008, 2008, the last time he used unemployment. And so, um, yeah. So we have switched banks from a bank to a check to a um, credit union since then. And so our um, checking account is through them now. And um, we still have the account at the bank. We need to go close it, but we never use it. It's just still open, but it's in another town where we used to live. And so we're slow at getting to places and like <laughs> doing what we should, I apparently, because we had already, like in 2008, we still had our bank account up in Atlanta, which is so funny because um, we had lived here for four years by then. That's so weird, but I don't know. You just don't get a, you're working and you don't get around to changing things. So, and when, you know, your checks are direct deposited into your account, it's like, how often do you actually go to the bank anyway? So, um, and now our bank is really close to our house. So these are stickers in this, this is cool. Um, so you can use all the stickers on here, but then there's like another page on the back that you can use. Like, I don't know if this is a sticker or if it's just the back of the page. So you have a double option there. So we are still waiting for them to unlock it so Scott can get his unemployment. So we're kind of living on the money that we have right now saved up so and that won't last forever but our bills are paid up and that's the main thing so um I think we just have one very small one that needs to come out on Monday but we have the money to cover that so um these are project life cards it looks like they're poster or postcards like you can mail to someone but I'll just use them like the large size um like pocket page cards. So this says awesome, mellow, magical, nice. And here's some other ones. So like if you're a card maker, these would be helpful for you if you're making cards. You could just like glue the back of these on a card. Um, but you could, I would probably cut off congrats thinking of you and I'd probably just use the floral. Or you could fussy cut the florals out too. So, and they're perforated, so you can put those out. So that's really all that's going on as far as, like, that goes. Um, school is going good. I'm still 4.0, so. Um, I it would really suck if I lost my 4.0, like, this last course. That would really suck. That is really pretty. I like that, but. I'm just doing my best and hoping for the best, and... I know that it doesn't really matter, so it's just reassuring that I know what I'm doing. That's the most important thing. So that's really pretty paper too. This is pretty too. Some really pretty things in here. Um This is just an advertisement. 
This is that was paper. This is really thick cardstock, like super thick, very very thick. Oh, this is like thicker than normal cardstock. So these are flowers that I could cut out. Or I could use this as just cardstock, which I probably will use this because I really like it. It's pretty. And this is another really thick one. So. And that's just like a, I think these could be framed if you wanted them to because they're really, really thick. Um, but I, I won't frame anything like this. But I can use like pieces of it with my scrub book. Florals. This is really pretty. I like that. I think these are poppies. So otherwise, I mean, everything is pretty well calm. Hunters moved back in. Um, there's not really much more that we can do on the house right now until Scott starts working again and like, um, you know, we can budget it in to finish the floor in here however I want it, whether I want carpet or, I really don't want like a shag carpet in here because I remember um, having my scrapbooking stuff in a room, the carpet before and like little brads and stuff would like fall on the floor and then they'd get like stuck in the carpet. I did not like that at all. So if I were to get a carpet, I would have to get like a very flat matte carpet. Um, but I don't know that it would be thick enough to match the, um, the, um, to meet up, like be level with the laminate flooring that partially comes in this room. Um, my other option is to put tile in here, which I could do. I'm leaning toward tile. My mom and dad said there's a new kind of tile that they're going to put in one of their rooms in their houses that it's, it looks like laminated flooring, but it's actually tile. And, um, like, I'm not sure if it's ceramic tile. Um, but we need to look into that because that might be the best option just because then I can sweep in here and, and it'll be high enough that it will, um, meet up with the, with the, um, the laminate flooring, it's kind of only like an eighth to a quarter of an inch above the subfloor. So I don't think that it's really that, um, much higher, but I do, I don't want, I don't want it to be unlevel. So these are smaller, like cut apart things. Um, and then like solid on the back which I really like some of these florals. These are nice for like, um, if you're building a cluster, you have these little small pieces and these are nice to like fussy cut out. So, so a lot of options. I'm a solid. So we can't really do too much anyways, as far as like remodeling goes anymore um, until, cause um, his job loss was completely unexpected. So, but I'm glad that he found something new right away. So that was a, definitely a blessing because I didn't know what we were going to do. Because he's the main breadwinner in the family. Okay, so these I think are bookmarks because they punch out. And then there's like a hole to like put a string in, like if you were to give a bookmark as a gift. Um, but I will probably use these as tags. I will punch them out and then like cut them into like tags um, and use them that way on my scrub bag because I don't really use bookmarks. These are really pretty. These would be really pretty fussy cut out. That's gorgeous. That would be really pretty in a scrub bag page. My favorite oh. dandelion puffs. I love them. I will definitely do a page on dandelion puffs. My sister and I have a thing about dandelion puffs. We would always make witches on them when we were little kids. 
Um, this is like a color sheet. I think that you could use Copics or whatever kind of marker and color this in on your own, or you could use this like gray muted tone floral on the back. This one the same. You could color it in if you wanted to. And then this is really pretty too. In fact, this might look pretty like together with this if you fussy cut this flower out and then you fussy cut this leaf out and kind of like put it together. That might be really pretty. Because I only scrapbook um, 12 by 12 now, um, I try to think of like options that I can use like um, for the eight and a half, 11 paper by 11 paper. Um, definitely the daisies will be cut out. Um, this is pretty too. You use pieces of both sides. Um, that's a floral that can be colored in. That's really pretty. I love that floral. That would be really pretty fussy cut it out. And here's another sticker sheet of florals. Floral stickers. And this is just solid pink and green. Green and yellow. Orange and pink. Red and green. Green and purple. Blue and light blue. There's like a little floral plant planter. This is really pretty. I really like that. That pattern. I like those florals too. And gray. I like this side better than this side with the birds. There's some like tropical flowers. I like this side better. I like the darker floor, the, I can't talk. The darker florals for matting. I think that that just looks really pretty. I love this paper. This is really pretty. Much more than this. I mean, this is pretty, but this is like, definitely stands out. Okay, so this is a book that came with it and it's called My Herbarium. And it's basically like um, a nature notebook. I would call it a nature notebook. Like if you were going out on a nature walk, um, you could write the date, the location, the scientific name of the plant that you came across, the common name, the habitat, notes about the plant and then you could do either a dry brush technique if you wanted to paint or um draw like make a sketch of the plant or the bug so this is definitely like a nature notebook that is really cool we used to make these when my kids were little um when i was homeschooling them when they were little um we would do nature notebooks and we would go out on hikes and things like that and then they would um, draw what they saw and it really helped with their artistic and create creative ability all my kids have been able to draw they just I don't know if it it comes from you know my creative genes or that I just help them develop it through um, incorporating that into their schooling um, this one is divided up much like the ones that we use for homeschooling so like seasonally, um, the kids did books on trees, like um, they would pick a tree in our yard or a tree at the park that they would watch all year and then they would draw and take notes on that tree and how it changed over the year. So that was really fun. Lots of neat ideas that you can do when you homeschool your kids. But now they're just older. <laughs> Well, all of them are graduated, but, but Ethan, so, um, and Ethan isn't really much into that anymore. He just is excited to get done. He's a junior. And, um, the one thing that we do, we do two things mainly together. We do science experiments together and we do radiant, like, um, we read together. Um, he will read his, he has two books that he's reading on his own. Um, one is called um, North, Norse Mythology, and I think it's called Norse, Myth, 
mythology. And it's a more recent book um, that he's reading and discussing with a friend. And then um, he's also rereading Harry Potter. And um, those he just reads on his own. And then, and then he's reading, um, we, we do read alouds um, a couple of times a week. And um, I am reading, um, I am reading, um, what is it called? Um, the two books that we read together are, um, I can't think of what they're called. One is, um, Nature by Henry David Thoreau and, um, it's portions of like Walden and different, um, natural observations that he, he created, um, a diary of, um, when he was living in Massachusetts and, um, and so there's a lot of discussion in that where, Ethan will read it and then we'll kind of discuss it because it's kind of in depth and like some of the stuff is hard to understand. Um, if you've ever read Thoreau, it's sometimes it can be a little wordy and, um, and, oh, and the other one, the, the one, the other one that we're reading together is Uncle Tom's Cabin and the same thing with that book. Um, there are some deep, um, discussions that, um, that are important to recognize in that book. And so those are the two books that we are going over together this year. Um, just because it's a little bit easier to um, discuss with another person. Like, um, and Ethan is really good at comprehension. He's, he just, he just understands things at a higher level, but there are some things that are just far advanced. I mean, things that um, happened long ago that you, I mean, both books are classics. And so the, the wording is different than like what we use today. Um, and so it's kind of difficult for, you know, young people today to really connect with the stories, um, unless you kind of like, um, discuss it with another person and, you know, so it's kind of difficult to, well, some of the, like Uncle Tom's Cabin is often difficult for adults to comprehend and to like, um, to understand that time period, you know, and how difficult it was for them. It just, you know, or the thought processes of the transcendentalists. I mean, you know, you wonder why they thought the way that they did and, you know, so. Okay, so these are letters um, that can be cut apart. These um, are florals that punch out their punch and I think you can like probably combine them with a brad or something if you want not exactly sure what I'm gonna do with these um, because I'm not really big on the punch out flowers but um I don't know we'll see I'll use them for something and then these can be like punched out with a square punch or a circle punch or they can be like cut around, um, to use. Um, oftentimes when I have like, um, letters that are non-adhesive, I will use my Xyron, my small Xyron and make alphabet stickers with them on my small Xyron and then, um, the sticker maker, and then I'll just put them in with the letter stickers. And then as I want to use them, I will. And then they're already a T7 and I don't have to worry about it later on. This is a really pretty font with roses. And then there's like the numbers are in a different font. 
and they give you like a couple pages of letters so you know you can this is really pretty too here's another font made of florals that this one I would probably cut around just because it's so pretty but of course that takes some time <laughs> to do but and then the backs are like there is stuff on the back it's double-sided but I would use the letters because they're just very pretty Here's another letter font. It's got floral. It's got a floral on the back too, if you don't want to use the letters. So. And then these are label stickers. It's just a lot to this book. I mean, so there's something on the back of this. I think they're posters. Okay, so I'm going to take this off. So these are label stickers and they have florals and stuff that you can use like as labels. Um, these, this is called wrapping paper. So you could actually wrap a gift with this paper if you wanted to because it's like super large. It's large enough to wrap a gift with and it's double sided. But it's not like super thin paper. So I will probably, I probably won't use this to wrap a gift. I will probably use it for, um, for scrapbooking. <laughs> just because the paper is just so pretty. This is another sheet of it. So it could be used for gift wrap or, although it would make a beautiful present. That is gorgeous paper, but I think I will use it um, use it with my scrapbook cane more than anything. Um, these are border stickers, so lots of different floral styles, border strips, and there's a sheet of punch out tags. And florals. Oh, it's rookie. So you can punch out the tags. Those are really pretty. And then they're di they're different on the back. So you have two choices. You can either use one side or the other. So it's kind of cool. And these are cards. Like if you want to make a greeting card for somebody, it's white on one side and they're perforated. So if you want to make a bunch of greeting cards and use the envelopes that are in here you can do that um i will probably use it for scrapbooking just cut out like pieces of it um although these ones that say thank you and thinking of you i might use those cards to send to people i'll probably set that one aside just because um i probably wouldn't use that on scrapbook page and then here are some envelope templates if you wanted to like make your own envelope to fit that card. All you have to do is cut it out. And there's several of them and then there it's also double sided. So these envelopes would all fit those cards. Or you can just use the paper as well. So and this is just some more paper. That's pretty. This reminds me of Christmas with pine. There's another fancier envelope. It's got like a scallop up top. And then there's pattern paper. There's that. I think this is intended to like Okay, so you cut it out on this side, and then this is the cover, and like this is the flap of the envelope, and then this is where you would write the address, which is really kind of fancy and cool. Um, this is just lined paper and a floral. That's really pretty. More of those poppies. Double-sided. There's a lot of paper in here. The floral. 
And like these, like look at that, how good that goes. Like if you were to make like a tag or something out of this, if you weren't going to use it for envelope, those flowers just match perfectly. They're so pretty. It definitely coordinates really nicely. That's that one. Back to that. It says allow your thoughts to blossom. And then in the back of that, so this is like a pocket page that I will probably use for my scrapbook. Um, I don't know in what way I would use it. Um, I'll probably just cut it because I don't want it to rip. But like you can use it for many different ways and then like glue it on. Like if you, if you adhere this, like if you cut this off and adhere it to a 12 by 12 sheet, you're not going to see the back of this. And it'll be a really nice packet to like stick um, cards in. Like if you save your cards that you receive from people. And put that in there. And then this is like a poster, I think. Um, but I'll probably just cut, fussy cut those flowers out and use them. This says flowers in the garden. And it's got like the names of the scientific names of them and stuff. Um, I mean, this would be cool for like a, for a classroom, so I don't know. I don't know if I'll save that for like studying plants or what, but, um, that's it. That is everything. So, um, I'm hoping to get some scrapbooking done sometime this weekend, but I don't know if I can. It just depends on how. Um, how long this takes to continue developing my thematic units. So, um, but I thank you all for watching and I hope to see you back here at Not So Ordinary Scrapbook Channel. Bye.